Well, let's start with a short moment. If you just stop thinking for a moment, what remains? A sense of alertness. There is clarity there. It's cognizant, the power to know. In balanced view, we simply call this open intelligence. It's an intelligence, and it's wide open. And we have access to it at all times. It's always on. It's just we haven't been trained to acknowledge this open intelligence at all times. The other term we use in balanced view is data, which can be thoughts, emotions, sensations, any phenomena, anything we know or anything we don't know. Data are the dynamic energy of this open intelligence. Just like the crystal ball, the images in the crystal ball are the dynamic expression of that crystal ball. They appear in the crystal ball and they recede back into the crystal ball. The same too with all data streams. They appear in open intelligence and they recede in open intelligence. So when we take short moments and we acknowledge this open intelligence, that takes the, uh, the grip off the data. You know, immediately there's a sense of relief. When we just stopped thinking for a moment, you could feel there was a, just a nice relaxating, relaxing feeling, kind of a, you know, just an energy, an aliveness. So then all the data streams are, they're still running. You know, when we start thinking again, open intelligence is still there, it's primary. Open intelligence is in the thinking, open intelligence is in no thinking. And then emotions come up, you know, especially in family circumstances or in any sort of political environment, there's a lot of emotions. Now we've been trained to give emotions a lot of importance. You know, we label them as something very definitive. We give them independent power and meaning. I mean, you know what that feels like, and you know what it looks like, and you know the results of believing that emotions have something important to tell us. You know, we get angry at someone and then there's a whole story of blame and judgment and criticism and then, you know, it comes back to ourself and then there's shame and guilt. and So it just perpetuates a lot more data. And it, it's not comforting. There's not a sense of relief or an open-heartedness towards the other person when we're when we're only referencing the emotions or the thoughts or the, the sensations. So in balanced view, we're training in something so radically different. In balanced view, for short moments, let all your data be exactly as they are. Like in this room right now, you can let everything be as it is, any of the sensations you have or any of the emotions that are coming up. Let the thoughts be as they are. I mean, the thoughts, they just... They arise and they recede. And then another one comes and another one. They're a free-flowing expression. So this is the practice, short moments of open intelligence, short moments of letting everything be as it is. And then we tap into this comprehensive intelligence, an intelligence we haven't been operating before. We haven't been running. We've been running conventional, reified intelligence the thoughts, the emotions, the sensations. So when you live a lifetime running that kind of intelligence, we don't really have a reference point for what open intelligence is. So in balance view, there's the short moments, but we have four mainstays. We have a support network so that it gives us the example of what it means to rely on open intelligence. What is the demonstration in one's life? You know, what are the results of relying on open intelligence rather than only on the thoughts, emotions, sensations? So the four mainstays, one is short moments, two is a trainer, <clears throat> three is the training itself, and four is a, a worldwide community. So you put all these together and you have a comprehensive package. It's an algorithm, it's a pattern of instruction that when you rely on all four of these, the result is guaranteed 
of open intelligence continuous at all times, where there is the motivation to be of benefit to all, the skillful means to be of benefit to all, including ourselves, clear insight and discernment, mental and emotional stability at all times as well. You know, these might seem like lofty claims, but, you know, this is something I experience on a daily basis. There's mental and emotional stability regardless of the stream or the storm of data. You know, a lot of us are trying to clear our minds. You know, we like to have a technique that we can clear our minds so we can be concentrated, so that we can have grace when we're in a heated situation. We don't want to come off as reactive and hurtful. We want to have a, a smart and a smart thing to respond with so that the other person knows about our opinions. And But, you know, I mean, that's based on data. It's like by sharing your opinion with somebody, they're going to have a different opinion. So it's like trying to find a s unity and balance based on the varying descriptions, varying data streams. And it's really, really difficult to come to this, this harmony and balance that we're so looking for when you're basing it on data streams. The fleeting, impermanent data that really don't really fully describe who we are as humans. You know, if we really want this unity, we have to look what, it, what unifies all of us. You know, everyone, not just a few of us. What about us is, is unified? And that's open intelligence. It's the same open intelligence with everyone. You could ask every single person on the planet to stop thinking for a moment, and they'd have the exact same open intelligence. And then, then they'll have their own set of data. They'll have their own political views. They'll have their own views about everything. They'll have a slightly different view than you. So I've found that it doesn't, you know, I don't need for people to know my opinion in order to have a harmonious relationship with them. That's not how I operate anymore. That's how it used to be. You know, I used to have very strong opinions and belief systems in every area of my life. And in order to have harmony with someone, you know, I wanted, they had to know my opinion and either agree with it. If they didn't, then it was hard to have a harmonious relationship with them. So now I don't even bother trying to have someone, you know, like my opinion. I don't need to like theirs. That's not what it's about. It's about seeing another person as this exalted being, as, the, as an exalted human with whatever their data is, no matter their, their race, no matter their religious background, no matter their political affiliation. None of that matters. When we get together in balanced view, it's the mission statement is for the benefit of all and whatever that takes. You know, we put that as priority. We take responsibility for the data that we experience. You know, if we do have strong opinions and we're in a balanced view group, we learn that we don't express those opinions hoping that the group will gel with them. We already know what that's like. So I'll be going to India soon where we'll, we'll set up our center. We have three houses that we rent and we need to build some outdoor structures and we'll build up a kitchen so we can serve food for thousands of people. We'll have trainings all winter and we'll be together every single day for four months. So try to picture, you know, we'll start with about 20 people and then a lot more will come. But we have to work together every day and if everyone had a different opinion on how the Clarity Kitchen should look like and what the menu should be, there'd be a lot of debate and probably arguments and then hurt feelings and we wouldn't get anything done. But by relying on open intelligence, by letting your data be as it is, you're not attached to your opinion any longer. You start to see a much broader vantage. You know, you mentioned problem solving. The solution is in that problem. That's another thing, you know, the solution is in the problem itself. Going back to the basics, open intelligence, inseparable from 
whatever data is appearing in that moment. We learn to f see data not as enemies any longer. They're not some kind of foe that's out to get us. You know, this is also very radically different than anything we've ever been taught or anything we've trained in. You know, when a problem arises, we get tense, we, maybe we lose our concentration, and, you, you know, the whole story kind of goes in a lot of different directions. And then, you, you know, you're like, well, how do I solve this problem? Well, the first thing you do is rely on short moments, let all the confusion, all the tension, the frustration just be as it is. You know, this is a training ground. It's not going to happen all at once where you know exactly what to say to the other person or, you know, you may not know a solution right away, but by continuing to take short moments, by participating in the balance you training, relying on a trainer, listening to the endless array of training media on the website, you know, we talk about every area on the website and the different videos you can search topics and keywords so you tune in you know there's a lot of there's a wealth of information on all different topics and then you hang out with the community so you're constantly being empowered to see that you know there's nothing wrong with your circumstance you know it's not an insult to you because of the data you're experiencing you're not a victim of what's going on and then the solutions, they, they just start to emerge very organically and naturally. And, you know, you have a lot of other people to ask for, for, uh, ask for help. When other people are relying on open intelligence, again, they're not so opinionated or stuck to any one way of doing things. In Balance View, we're very flexible. You know, we have a standardized education that we're offering, but the way it's delivered and then the settings and with the so many different people you know we're very flexible so you'll uh, yeah it's just a matter of time it really is a matter of time and participating in the trainings you know like you are doing that's you'll have more and more insight into what's needed and again it won't be based on descriptions of data like fear or what will the other person think of me or you know how much money will I lose or what's at stake here you know you start to see a much broader vantage like well you start to see you know will this be of benefit to a lot of people or only a few people so it really breaks open a lot of our limiting ideas about ourselves about the whole world about politics I mean, the way things are running now, they just, they're really not working so well. You know, we continue to try and rearrange things a little bit. And there's momentum going. I mean, everybody wants change. You know, we want peace for everyone. We want harmony. We want what's right for everyone. We want everyone to have food and shelter and clothing. So, you know, more and more people are finding they have a voice. You know, with the internet now, you know what's going on with pretty much everyone in the world. You can tune into Facebook and you can see a lot of stuff there. A lot of opinions, a lot of ideas. Maybe you see your family posting things that are completely opposite to your view. You have a choice, though. Do you, do you dive in there and get all frustrated and worked up and you know, ho holding resentment to a family member, or do you just let all that energy be exactly as it is? You know, feeling, allowing ourselves to feel this intense hatred that people feel. You know, we don't have to be afraid of this, the data stream of hatred. When you let it be as it is, you see that it has no power over you to block you from having an open heart to somebody. That's also, you know, test that out. Every time you feel this anger or hatred towards somebody for whatever they've done, maybe they've committed a horrendous crime, they've, you know, they've killed someone or kidnapped someone, you know, let all that just rage within you. 
Don't avoid it. Don't indulge it. Don't replace it. Clarify its meaning. It all comes back to this pristine, wide open intelligence. Open intelligence is naturally ethical, naturally moral. We don't have to bring that about. It's an inherent quality of open intelligence. The skillful means to bring about a peaceful, cooperative society is in open intelligence. It's not in reifying data. <laughs> so yeah, with all the stuff that's going on in the world today, of course I can feel movement of energy, and I'm doesn't mean I agree with everything that's going on, but I don't... There's just a, a sense of ease and openness and knowing, well, I... For me, I'm just going to spend more time training up people on open intelligence so that we can have many more people that are relying on this fundamental nature of mind rather than a bunch of stuff that's written in books and what institutions are teaching us. So that's what we all do together. You know, We find this relief. We find that there is more openness. There is more of a skillful means present available. There's more joy available. You know, we're not so dismal about life anymore. When somebody's rude to you and makes, you know, comments to you that are uncalled for, you probably, you realize what's going to happen if you yell back or you, you strike back. I mean, we've all tried that, you know, we want the other person to know that they've done something wrong, but really, by training an open intelligence, those remarks no longer, you know, we're not victim to them anymore. And we find that we're more confident. We, we might know of, of a wrathful, skillful thing to say to that person that's not coming from a place of being a victim any longer. You know, we're empowered. We're empowered to say what we need to say. You know, an unflinching stability that knows what to say and do in all moments. And if we don't feel we're quite there yet, we don't really know what to say, it's fine just to not say anything. And I've done this a lot. You know, at first I really just had to kind of be quiet when people were making remarks to me. When I was first involved in the training and, you know, there was something new in my life and they were seeing a shift. And, or posting something on Facebook and have somebody comment on it, being either sarcastic or argumentative and just resisting going there, you know, knowing that it wouldn't really be of benefit. The other person, if they're not relying on open intelligence, they wouldn't know how to interpret it. So, you know, we become clear in ourselves. We find this, this, this strong self-leadership. You know, we, we have leadership over all of our data streams. No matter how rowdy they are, how naughty they are, how mean they are. You know, just look at all the data you have every day. When you wake up in the morning, all the thoughts, all the emotions, the sensations. I mean, there's a lot going on. So you have many opportunities to take short moments and let, let it flow. You know, it's like not trying to manipulate it any longer. You know, give yourself some practice where you just, you let everything be as it is. It's a lot easier than reacting to things, but it, it takes practice because we all have so much energy. Even when we're kind of tired, and there's still a lot of energy. You know, a lot of times that energy, it just, you just want to force it out and get things done. You know, especially here in, in America, we want to get things done. We're, we're ready. We don't like sitting back and waiting for things. You know, what's the rush, though? Once you're introduced to the fundamental nature of mind, you know, really check in. There's a sense of security there, a sense of okayness. You know, an ease, a, a really starting to appreciate ourselves for the first time. You know, go on a holiday with short moments. You know, just give yourself a, a morning where you just kick back and you take short moments and you say, I'm not going to do anything about any of the stuff that's arising. It's just like I'm lying on, the, on a beach chair and I'm not worrying about anything.
once you're introduced to open intelligence and you have that instinctive recognition that, you know, it's yours, it is you, then it really intrigues something in you. And, and the balance you training is so effective. You know, I have in my life, I haven't found anything else that was as, as effective as this for curing my anxiety, de curing my depression, you know, when feeling like bumping up against a glass ceiling with all areas of life and not being able to, to progress, not being able to harmonize, not knowing where to live in the world, all that stuff, just having all that outshone completely.